Hi everybody, Jesse here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. Long time no see, I've been busy, summer's coming, I'm getting my wheels all lined up and things working out and I'm going to film a bunch of videos this weekend over the long weekend. It's Thursday, you guys will probably see this today and yeah, you guys will get kind of, um, I got the whole long weekend so I got like four days of filming to do which is going to be super awesome. So today's video I have for you a scene card featuring the newly released image from or stamp set from the greeting farm called s'more fun uh this was released on the 15th of may 2018 in case you guys are watching this some far off time in the future which would be really weird anyway um <laughs> i'm laying out a bunch of my stamps here and that's because they don't cover each other so i don't need to layer them in order to create the scene so i'm stamping everything that doesn't need to be layered or is going to be in the front first and I'm stamping them out using some black Copic Friendly ink here. Um, I like to use my sleeve so I can rub and my hand doesn't stick to my stamp positioning tool. Then I took it and I put um, masking paper. I had pre-cut them out over top of all of these images. And then we are going to stamp our next ones on that layer in behind. So you always want to stamp what's in your foreground first and work your way backwards and mask it as you go. I don't always show myself putting the mask on because sometimes it's painfully slow for me to do it. I fight to get them off and it's just, they're tedious. I mean, if you guys have done masking, you know that, uh, but I really enjoy the look in the end, so I find it way worth it. So once we get this all stamped out, I took a die. I don't remember what die this is. It's from my stash and I cut a mask of the top and the bottom here and that is going to allow me to create the ink blending using distress oxides I do believe to give me my ground and then my sky so we're going to start with that I'm going to come in yep yeah, with my oxide ink so I have antique linen walnut stain and um, vintage photo and then I grabbed scrap piece of paper so that I didn't get it all over my cutting board that I am working on um, so I'm just starting with the antique linen and layering that up and then we're going to add some of the other colors to it. You can see how I'm pulling it closer to me and slowly getting more and more off screen. I apologize for that. I'll work on that. I'm kind of working on a new, I'm using a new setup here so that I don't have the camera shake when I do things like this because I used to have the camera sitting right on the table that I work on and then it would shake and shake and shake and that's no fun for anybody. So we're just working on blending all of these together, giving it a little bit of depth in the background. Um, so I hope you guys have all been well. Like I said, it's been a little while since I uploaded the last video. I've just been busy with work and life and mom and Caleb started ball. So I'm at the ball field like two to three nights a week. And in between that, you know, we got to practice all the time. So we have to play catch and we have practice batting and we have to this and that and this and that. And it's super fun and I love it. Um, I'm adding a little bit of a yellow glow here from yellow and orange off of what will be the fire at the end. But I'm really enjoying spending lots of time with him. So that's kind of slowed down the filming process. But I know he's leaving this weekend for a couple of days. He's going um, over to a friend's house. But I'm going to take advantage of those days and hopefully film a bunch of videos for you guys so I can more consistently get them out. I would really like to get back to doing Stamp Stash Saturday. So um, you guys will see a video on Saturday. I, You will. Because tomorrow Caleb's at school and I will get Saturday's video filmed. <laughs> so now we're going to mask off after it was dried, that bottom piece there. I just had to wait for it to dry because I did sprinkle the water on there. And then we're going to come in and I have a bunch of different blues here. And I'm going to start just by inking it up completely. It's going to look really blotchy. That's fine. We add more layers and things and it all blends itself out and becomes really nice and smooth in the end. So carrying on. And then this one is Blue Punk Sketch. Add that one in. See how fussy I'm being? Not at all. <laughs> I'm just kind of slapping her on. Um, so I'm going back in with Mermaid Lagoon and I'm just going to give this all a second coat. And then I will come in with a cloud stencil. I do believe it's when I die cut. Yeah. So it's this one. This is uh, die from Stamp Anything. And I just die cut that out onto some cardstock and I'm using it as a stencil. So I'm coming in with some purple. I'm just creating little puffs of clouds all over the place and then I switch and I come in with some blues flip the stencil over so that you can get kind of different textures and the clouds going in different directions so they don't all look like they're the same way I enjoy doing that and we're just gonna keep filling them in until I decide that there's enough in the sky when we get to the end I do add some additional shading and things in the clouds with um, some watercolors and some gouache and then in the bottom like on the ground I come in with my Copics and just create a little bit of shading under our characters but until we get there we're still blending in clouds <laughs> 
My favorite part is about to come up. I love when I pull masks off and the images are bright and white and haven't been colored yet. And it's just like magic because it's all one flat layer. Nothing's glued on top of each other. And I think it's just so fun. It's a lot of work and there's a lot of prep involved. But I've always thought that it's really worth it in the end. And I just love the way all of all the cards like this come out. So now I'm going to start pulling all of these off. Um, when I take this bottom one off, I don't care if it pulls parts of the mask with it now because... I am finished with ink blending. You can see how it took some of her skirt off. But I am pulling slowly because I just don't want it to accidentally rip any of the paper or leave any of the mask behind. That's what's happening up there. So it took that little boy's mask completely off. I do use, oh, I'm fighting with my nails now, but I usually come in with my gutter bee scissors to help me um, pull all of my mask off. So we're going to get all of those yanked off. I just kind of find a loose corner and that's where I start getting it going and then I grab it with my fingers and I pull it the rest of the way. But isn't that awesome to see that bright white of the paper come back? It shows how much color you actually put on there. I think this turned out so pretty in the end. So we're just going to keep pulling those off. So back to Ball. Caleb's really enjoying Ball. He's um, he's eight. I don't believe he's eight. I've kept something alive for eight years. Better than any of my plants can say in the house, that's for sure. Anyway. <laughs> He really enjoys it. He he loves that sport. He always has. He's been playing f since he was like three. So this is like his fifth year of ball. And he's finally getting to the point where um, next year they start pitching and all of that kind of stuff. And playing in a, league, like, in a league where they're pitching to each other and everything. And it's all played by the kids. There's no teachers pitching or pitching machines or anything like that. So he's pretty excited for that to come out. So he's working really hard to kind of get all of his bases around him and have his... Um, throwing on point and being able to catch and bat and everything else. So it's fun to see him practice and grow in a sport that I enjoyed when I was a kid. I really liked ball. I wasn't much of a runner, but you didn't have to be able to run very fast if you could hit the ball far enough. So that's kind of what I shot for. <laughs> but we're going to come in and work on our COVID coloring here. And I did use the same skin tone for all of these guys. I just decided to keep it super simple on pick one and use it on all of them simply because there was so much coloring involved and so many characters and just it was just a big scene so I kind of kept it as simple as I could on a lot of the fronts. I know I use a lot of markers for my skin tones. You definitely don't have to cram all of these markers into these little images. I'm just neurotic and insane and you don't have to do this many colors. Like I, If you took your E04, your E11, your E21 and then your E000 or 00, whichever one you have, that is plenty. Like the amount of colors I crammed into these are, but it's, it's the way I like to do it. So it's kind of up to you. I do color all of my images when I use my Copics from dark to light. Um, and I tend to only do one layer of color. I am working on Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. Um, for anybody that needs to know what the cardstock is I'm using. Um, I've said it in multiple videos. I used to use Express It exclusively, uh, but the last batch I got was bad and it just doesn't blend and it makes my markers sticky no matter how much I clean them. And I've been using markers for a long time. So, um, I just went with switching the paper I use because it wasn't making me happy anymore. And it was not worth me fighting and fighting and fighting in order to get, um, my coloring to look the way I wanted it to look. So that's why I moved over to the Nina. I did try hammer mill. I've only used it once and I wasn't a fan, but some people really enjoy that as well. It's kind of like a pick a paper that you love sort of a deal. So now we're working on their hair and this is where the characters are going to get different, differ hmm, can't English today. This is where I'm going to differentiate the characters. There we go. That's the word I wanted. Guys, see, I can speak. Um, but I'm going to give that, they all get different hair tones and that kind of takes away from all of their skin being exactly the same. So we're going to work on that. When I do hair is where I break my dark to light rule and I work light to dark. And that is so it doesn't blend out my flicks as I'm coming in with those darker colors and wash them out. So it's the only time I kind of switch around and do things the other way. Once in a while, if I have a really complicated image, I should do one of those for you guys again soon. Some, some real big detailed images. I don't know. I'll pick something out maybe from Craft and Kimmy and do that. And um, I'll show you guys how I go in with my light color from time to time to mark out where all of my shadows are going to be. I like to do that when I'm not 100% sure because if I go in with the lightest color and I decide that the shadow doesn't want, I don't want the shadow there or I want to switch kind of where the light source is coming from, you don't notice it in the end because it's the lightest color and it all gets blended in. 
So we're working on our last girl's hair. This is a long video, guys. I think this one's close to 20 minutes long. I enjoyed doing it, though. I love the way this card came out. Um, props to those of you that noticed my nail polish changed partway through this video because it was recorded on two separate days, like a week and a half apart. So <laughs> if you caught that the nail polish changed, I like thumbs up. It's different again now as I'm um, doing the voiceover. So that shows how long sometimes it takes me to be able to get to the point where I have a chance to sit down and voice over a video and all of that fun stuff. So we're going in and starting to work on our characters now, giving them all their clothing. Um, I'm using teals and blues and pinks and I use all sorts of colors on these. Um, I wanted to kind of put lots of color in the tents and the clothing and all of that simply because the background was very, very blue and very, very brown because of the, the hill and the way I created the grounding and then of course um, the big sky. So yeah, I have, I don't know, I don't know what to film for you guys. Do you guys enjoy like all of these processes where I give you guys like one layer cards with lots of detail? Or do you guys like it better when I just stamp out an image and color that image and then show you the finished card at the end? I'm, I've kind of been in a funk for what to do for videos. I know I need to watercolor some florals. People really seem to enjoy those. So I'll work on one of those this weekend. But if you guys have any ideas and any specific things you'd like to see me do, if you've been over on my blog, which is always linked in the description box below, and there's a style of card you've really enjoyed or something of that nature, definitely pop me a message here on YouTube, like in the comment section or whatever, and I'll see if I can get around to filming something like that. I do read all of the comments and I appreciate everybody that takes those 30 seconds to leave me some super kind words or give me a thumbs up. That that means a lot to me. I may not always have time to reply simply because I'm at work, I'm at ball, I'm trying to get cards made, I'm trying to get design team commitments finished, all that kind of stuff and it only leaves me so many hours a day to actually kind of um, chill and not be working on something so to speak. Um, but I, I read them all and I really appreciate every single one of them. Don't think that I'm not reading them and I don't appreciate you guys. I cannot believe the amount my channel has grown in the last little while. Like it's, I'm over 3,000 subscribers. Like I did a happy dance in my living room when I hit 100. I did a real big happy dance in my living room when I hit 3,000. And that is so awesome, you guys. I still can't believe that there are that many people that have hit the subscribe button to my channel. And if you aren't one of them, you should because I like to do happy dances and that makes me very very ecstatic when something like that um, happens and I get subscribers and things like that it really makes me feel um, feel like you guys appreciate and enjoy the content I'm putting out and I'm really working on continuing on on that I know it slowed down but that's kind of what happens around here in the summertime I live in Saskatchewan for those of you that don't know I get like three months of good weather a year so like, I take advantage of May getting ready for those three months, and then June, July, and August, I like to go out and enjoy, and like, enjoy the summer we get for that brief blink of an eye before fall and the dreaded winter sets in again. So I kind of, I'm really trying to work on that balance to keep you guys getting videos and all of that stuff, so... We're adding some green into our trees here. We're getting closer and closer to the end. Look, I can stop babbling on soon. Um, because <laughs> I tend to do that a lot. I love this set. And if you guys didn't know, she, um, Marie also came out with, it's a digital set, but it's like an add on to this. And it's got like a Yeti and a picnic table and super cute little additions. So you could always print those out and color them and then create a scene just by building your images with them all fussy cut out either right on the line or with the little white line around them and stuff like that. I think it's adorable. I have to print it off yet. I haven't had a chance. So I'm hoping to get that printed and do something fun with those Yetis because I think that Yeti is, he's freaking cute. <laughs> so I did a peach and this is the BV family. So it's blue violets, but it's really, really dark. They're like great. I think that this is probably like if I could only have four markers, I would take these ones because I can do an entire scene with only these BB markers or an entire set of floral with only these four markers. I don't need any other colors to layer on top, nothing. I could do it all with these and have lots of contrast and be able to see everything separately and not just look like one gray wash. I just, those colors are my everything. And so we're going to go in and on this second tent, I'm going to do some yellow and I can't remember what the other color is, probably purple based upon what I don't see 
in this image, I would probably pick purple because why not have every color of the rainbow on a card, Jesse? Why not? Was I right? Hang on, hang on. Nope. Nope, I wasn't right. I went with teal. Wow. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I don't have the card in front of me to look at when I go to these little things. I'm like, hmm, what did I do? See, it's a surprise for me too. That's what happens when you wait so long in between things. Um, so this is the BG 70s. This used to be my favorite teal combination. Now I haven't used it in forever, but I think it worked out really, really well for this camp scene. I do like the way it looks as opposed to being a bright purple. It's kind of real, feels more like a true tent color. So I'm going to fill in the, um, the fire on the fire in the fire pit here. And then I come in with, oh, I give a little bit of yellow on those two faces just to, so that they have like the glow coming from the fire. And then I'm going to take and create some shadows underneath all of our characters and our tents here and get those all blended out. Then we're going to, I think then I'll come in with watercolor and stuff on the cloud line and in the bottom and all over the place because I like watercolors lots. And I really enjoy doing these cards where I kind of mix a whole bunch of mediums together and get things going. So I mixed up a little bit of like an indigo type color with my watercolors and I'm just kind of splashing them around in the corners, re-emphasizing some of the lines of the clouds just to bring some forward and push them further to the back, just to give it a lot more depth in the way it appears on, on the flat piece of paper. I'm trying to create as much depth as I can where it is truly completely flat because it is a piece of paper. I can also only add so much water to something here because it is Nina pa water or Nina solar white cardstock. It's not a watercolor paper of any sort, so I have to kind of take it easy. I'm going to add some brown into the bottom. The real cool thing is these also re react with the distress oxide, so you get kind of that that vintagey feel that those oxides get when they get nice and wet. I am taking this as some white gouache. It is from M Graham. Um, it's my favorite gouache. It's the one I have. I use it a ton. I have a big tube and a little tube. I've like, I carry one around with me. I use it all the time in my cards um, for white highlights and stuff like that. So that's it for this card. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please give me a big thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment if you have anything and subscribe if you aren't. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye for now.